want, want to move on a little bit because, um, of course, something that's very common over much of the rest of Europe we don't have here at the moment is identity cards. Mm. We know that the Prime Minister now thinks that these would be a jolly good thing, so does David Blunkett, but uh, others in the Cabinet aren't uh, so convinced. Um, D David, why do you think that Tony Blair wants us all to have ID cards? Uh, not only Tony Blair, I do. Um, this is a kind of big departure from my normal liberal uh, canon, but actually, it's a very—it it, it, it is actually kind of a part of the liberals' response to the notion of citizenship. In, in, in my case, um, the first thing to say is obviously a large number of countries in Europe—you said it—do have identity cards. Um, some of them are compulsory, some of them are not compulsory, and some of the countries that are not compulsory, they effectively carry them uh, as if they were. Um, and what this allows uh, people to do is to know pretty immediately who is a citizen and who's not and what their status as a citizen may be. This is incredibly useful for things like, I mean, at the moment, David Blunkett admits we have absolutely no idea how many illegal immigrants are in this country and we have no way of finding out. Um, in other countries, this isn't the case. They do have a way of finding out and they do know this. And for those of us on the left who believe in immigration and don't want to stop immigration, we have to admit that immigration has to be policed. It has to be a system that people have confidence in. Otherwise, there will be attempts to stop it altogether. And so identity cards form a very major part of doing that. But I want to just put one other gloss on it. There are almost no, there are very, very few things that we are asked to do in this country as citizens. There's jury service. We're not asked and there's taking our kids to school. Um, these are the two kind of things that request. We are not asked to serve in the army. We're not asked to undertake any other kind of service. I think for all of us to carry an identity card saying who we are and what our status is, is part of a, of a conceivable part of our citizens citizenship role. Michael, part of our role as citizens. We should all carry around these ID cards so that the government and everyone else knows exactly who's in the country and that of course, it's going to help get the, the asylum figures down. As a matter of principle, I'm opposed to identity cards, and I think that some of the advantages, which are bureaucratic, which um, sincere advocates of them, like, uh, like David outlined, um, are exaggerated. Um, as a matter of principle, I oppose identity cards, because I think it's not the case that the, um, the state can demand of me certain things. Those who exercise power exercise power at my, your, and David's pleasure. Ultimately, the important thing to recognize is that we, as free citizens, devolve power upwards we don't operate at the license or leisure or pleasure of those um, who happen to govern us at any given point. Um, we give them taxes so that they can spend money on our priorities. The idea that we should be licensed to exist by the state and that we have to have a card in order to uh, access whatever it is that we've paid for seems to me, as a matter of principle, to be wrong. But the bureaucratic advantages that people say that identity cards can bring um, aren't proven. Um, David mentions immigration and, of course, there are many other uh, apparent or alleged advantages that, that, that um, uh, identity cards are supposed to bring. But France has millions of people who are illegal immigrants, um, and yet, yet at the same time France has one of the most rigorous uh, um, um, identity card uh, systems that exist in continent. The idea that an identity card can, as it were, stop that human flow seems to me to be uh, a sort of cargo cult uh, view. You're placing your faith in this tiny talisman or piece of plastic as a way of keeping people out. In the modern world in which we live, uh, uh, the, the flows of humanity are not going to no. be held back by this little icon. No, they're certainly not going to be held back, but they do actually help you know what's going on. And one of the things that for someone like me faces uh, in arguing about immigration are the sort of statistics put around by organisations like Migration Watch, mm. which make claims about the numbers of Im illegal immigrants in Britain based on no very good statistics, which then touch off fantastic amount of furor and which we have no way of checking. Actually, France, which doesn't have a compulsory ID card, but which no has an ID card that 90% of uh, uh, of people carry voluntarily has a much better idea than we do about who's actually in the country and who doesn't. It doesn't, uh, but mm. you know, they also have a very significant uh, level of uh, net immigration from from North Africa. But I'm, but I want to take you up on this point of principle mm. because it's really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, according to your argument, nor should we be asked to do or demand of us to do jury service. In other words, the state would practically, according to you, have no rights to call upon its citizens. Now, I conceive of the state. Mm not as them up there who mm. are doing things to us, but as the practical uh, extension of myself and my mm. fellow citizens. That's why I support, for instance, the blanket idea that uh, people who are coming into the country should take citizenship classes and so mm. on, so that they should know the thing, the polity, which it is that they are joining. And that's why, in principle, 
I regard uh, an identity card as being a perfectly fine thing. Now, of course, my problem comes if some fascist regime takes the country mm. over um, and then starts using identity cards as a way of sorting us all out. But then, actually, the problem is the fascist regime, not well, the identity card. Yes, I mean, your point I about the fascist regime, it's the same argument, I would say, with immigration. Um, you can say that migration watch, or indeed any other lobby, uh, can, can stir up fears um, on migration. Um, and you're quite right that um, uh, it's perfectly possible for groups um, and I'm sure Migration Watch isn't doing this, but it's perfectly possible for groups to, to try to uh, use the presence of, um, of new Britons to try and stir up uh, ethnic strife. But you mentioned France, and you mentioned the case that there is a, a better statistical uh, sense of how many people in France are uh, immigrants, legal or illegal. But as we know, France isn't without um, uh, racial problems, um, and that France has a well-organized fascist party, which came close well, got into the second round of the, the presidential election last time round. Simply because we have a way of knowing the truth, that doesn't mean that the wicked won't still sow their particularly vile views into the heads of the gullible. And the important thing with immigration is not to be able to say, well, we have this statistical um, uh, check on, on immigration. The important thing is to win the argument for having more no, new Britons in but, this country. But, but this is also an argument about confidence. It's mm. also an argument about the confidence about people in the country that the laws are in some way being enforced. Because what groups who are against immigration play upon, and of course it's not a magic answer, under no circumstances is it a magic answer, but one of the things they play upon in this country is the sheer impossibility, the sheer chaotic nature mm. of knowing precisely what's going on, which allows these claims to be made. That's what's going on here. What's going on in France is a slightly different argument. And I quite like you to get to grips with the notion that I've kind of put forward to you mm. of citizenship and citizenship yeah. rights and, si uh, uh, and this collision that we face on the mm. notion of what the state actually is. Because it seems to me that you have a kind of a priori notion mm. that the state is going to do you damage. No, not at all. I just have an a priori preference for um, limiting the powers which happen to be in the hands of the state at any, at any given time. Because the general rule over human history is that once powers are yielded to the state, um, in, at moments of crisis or emergency. It's never the case that the state, or very, very rarely the case, that the state hands them back. One of the few, of course, is identity cards. We had them during the Second World War. And, 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 you the, anticipated the, and the agitation was so great <laughs> that we handed them back. But there are various other wartime measures, like, of course, income tax, that we haven't been able to, uh, to get uh, uh, rid of um, over time. Good. And therefore, I'm, <laughs> therefore, I'm naturally sceptical of um, saying we have a specific problem at the moment be it the, uh, the difficulty of monitoring immigration. This is a, 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 a way which uh, certainly will curtail liberties, but a way of providing us with broader security. Don't worry about it. I automatically worry about it. There would be an almighty row, wouldn't there? I mean, if, even if Tony Blair managed to overcome the doubters in his yeah. own cabinet, um, he would presumably run into huge amounts of opposition, not just from the Conservatives mm. and the Liberal Democrats, but from large numbers in his own party. Oh, no, no, there's no doubt about it. This is not the most popular idea I've ever supported. Uh, and I, I, you know, mm. I, I have no doubt. I, I mean, I put it down to the kind of the great escape psychology which is that moment on the tr uh, coming you know coming off the train when they're uh, forced to show their papers and they mm. think they've got away with it and the german officer suddenly says you know uh, have a good journey and the chap mm. turns around and says oh, thank you and they're caught mm. you know it's that <laughs> it's that kind of moment era papier bitter is some kind of big notion we don't have to do that in, mm. the, in this country we do have to provide our driving license we do have to provide our insurance documents there are billions of situations in which we go into any kind of building come in mm. here this evening go into the my place of work or anywhere else where we have to provide some form of identification identification is all around us but that all-encompassing identification is still something that many Britons are very afraid of of. But to other people, I mean, think about the Spaniards and the Portuguese who lived under fascism, have created, until very recently, created new democracies, mm. have ID cards and don't worry about them at all. But they, they haven't been given a chance to uh, get rid of them, and we have lived under them, and we did get rid of them. And that's because um, uh, we recognise that different countries have different ways of developing and reaching democracy, and we respect that difference. What I'm inviting you to do, David, is to respect the particular traditions that we have in Britain, the particular suspicions that we have of handing power to the state because we recognize that it may not be uh, given back, and the particular conception that we have of the individual and his relationship with the state, that on the continent, for a variety of reasons, both because of Roman law and also because of the Napoleonic system, mm. there is a different relationship between state and citizen. No, what and I'm we have a relationship between state and citizen here that means we don't have to account for our existence to the state, um, we, we, and we also have, as a result of that, a more vigorous approach when it I comes, for example, 
um, uh, recognising that someone is innocent until proven guilty through the jury system. Now, I rather wonder whether some of this hasn't gone too far, and that's part of, and that's part of the argument. I rather wonder whether the country asks enough of its citizens uh, and whether it asks enough of them in terms of their duties towards their own fellow citizens. But and surely they Well, it, it, it asks them. I mean, it's a very interesting question, David. One of the things that it does ask of us is, of course, a significant slice of our income um, overall as a nation. Uh, something like 47% uh, uh, of our income is taken by the state. And one of the curious things I think about that is that it actually uh, induces or encourages a sense amongst many citizens that their sole relationship to their fellow citizens is mediated <laughs> through the state by that tax transfer. And one of the things I think you're right to, to point to is the sense in which the ties of obligation that we have towards each other have perhaps become weaker. But I don't think that one of the things that we can do in order to encourage us to have ties of obligation to each other, which are to have the state mandating that we carry a piece of plastic. OK, I, I want to move on because, uh, of course, the news this evening has been dominated um, by the reports that uh, Tony Blair, the Prime Minister, was actually taken to hospital this evening. And we know that there's been an irregular heartbeat. This is the first um, serious health problem he's had since he came.